This is not your standard breakfast show with Andy Curtis. Uh, it's a pleasure once again to welcome Dr. Peace to Not Your Standard Breakfast Show. Good morning, Doctor. How are you? Good morning. I'm going to ask some questions about pet care. We're going to start off today with vaccination. Now, obviously, okay. uh, a lot of people here have cats and dogs. Um, not so sure the percentage of, of rescue animals to pedigree animals. Do you, I mean, what, what kind of animals do you see at your clinic? Do you see a, a mix of rescue animals and pedigrees? Yeah, a mix of both. And, and what, what's the kind of percentage, though? Mostly cats and dogs. I would say half and half, 50-50. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, but I, I don't usually look at them as rescue or breed animals. Right. Because I look at them as dogs and cats. Exactly. Yeah, because they, they will have um, the same basic needs and care and treatments. Right. How about somebody who takes perhaps a, a rescue dog that's a senior dog? Uh, are there more problems connected to that? I mean, I've, I've noticed through my own experience that rescue dogs actually tend to be healthier than pedigree dogs. I, I don't know if that's just me noticing from <laughs> my dogs or whether that's the case or not. I think it depends on how you look at it. But I think they, they look more tough. <laughs> because they have been through a lot, I'm sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about vaccination. Uh, in Thailand, what are the, the necessary vaccinations? If you have a dog or a cat, what are the vaccinations that you are required by law to have? Or, or is that not the case here? If it is by law, I would say rabies is the most important because it is um, the disease in mammals, all mammals, including us. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we are mammals too. Right. And if you get it, it's not pretty. It's, so it's a requirement by Thai law to yes, make sure your right. animals are vaccinated against rabies. Yes, right. Okay, so Thailand is not a rabies-free country. It is not. So does that make importing and exporting animals from here a bit of a problem? Or? Very, very difficult. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but presumably, if they come to see you and, and the, the animals are properly vaccinated and you have the vaccination record, it's easier to take them in and out of the country. Yes, right. But the waiting time, the waiting period is different too oh. in, in each country. Okay. Uh, so, for example, then, let's take the nearest uh, westernized country, for want of a better expression, Australia. Uh, how is that the nearest? I suppose that is the nearest, isn't it? Really? Uh, how how long is there a, a quarantine period required there, or do they have to be in quarantine here before they leave? I would say most of the island countries, like isolated island countries, right. like Australia, just Singapore, said. yeah, Singapore, Japan, they have really strict rules of taking mm. in animals or any other living living things, right? Because they can bring diseases or alien species into the country. Okay, and they of course don't want anything to happen. They don't want anything new, right? Because yes. If there's an outbreak, then then it's not easy to control. Sure. Yes. Are there any other vaccinations for your, for your animals that are required by law in Thailand? Here in Thailand, we call them combination vaccines, okay. which include a lot of diseases that are contagious and unfortunately deadly if, if they get it. Such as? What, I mean, what are Such the Such as uh, vaccinations? Okay. distemper, um, leptospirosis, um, para influenza and hepatitis. Okay, so those are are those specifically uh, dog related illnesses or is that? Oh a... yes, that's that's dogs related. Okay. And in cats, we call them combination vaccines. Also, there is something that is very alike with parvovirus, but in cats we call it panleukopenia virus. Okay. Yes. Wow. Symptoms are the same. Very complicated, but there's also <laughs> uh, there's also feline HIV, if I'm not mistaken. That's a, that's another. Um, we call it FIV, right. but it's basically quite the same thing. It um, lower their immunity, and whatever infections that they get, the symptoms are not simple. Right. So those are the vaccinations that are, that are basically the ones that you need to have. Um, in cats, it's more complicated than that because, like FIV or leukemia. There, there, there are vaccines for it, but if, if your cats already have it from birth or from the mom or got it in, later on in life, they won't be able to get the vaccine because the virus stay forever in their body. Right. And uh, worms, various heartworms and so on, um, are, these, are these prevalent in Thailand as well? Heartworm. Um, heartworm is quite a big thing, but I think most of the 
dogs and cats owners are more aware and they they give their um, pets treatments and prevention right so you, time. but you can do that on a monthly basis can't yes, you there's right, medication that, yeah. yeah okay and because we have a lot of mosquitoes which are the the host for heartworms oh well, i not see not the host but the the carrier. They, they carry. They yes, carry right. the, the they, diseases. They carry. Uh, so, is it actually possible then for dogs and cats to get mosquito bites? Yes, of course. Where? Um, where, where it's hairless. Okay, so there's not that many, <laughs> not that many places. They, so right. their nose, the tip of their nose. Yeah, nose or ears, ears or belly. Oh wow. Okay. So can that be quite serious then? Is that a, is that a fairly common thing that you see at the clinic? If they have heartworm infection it is really serious because it is the worms in the heart right as it says in the name so let's talk very briefly about allergies now this is something new to me you just mentioned this while we were listening to that song that animals are percept uh, susceptible to allergies what kind of allergies i think each living organisms <laughs> they, they can have allergy yes but it is really um, depending on each individual. Right. So uh, allergies would manifest themselves as what? Runny noses, red eyes? Yeah, it could be that or skin rash. Okay. Or itchiness. Okay, well that's obviously because of the heat. And one of my dogs, as as you know, one of my dogs uh, suffers greatly from, from skin difficulties because of the heat. Mm. Uh, what can we do, other than leave the aircon on 24 hours a day, what can we do to help them, to make it easier for them? First of all, I think observation is really important to get to know your pets more and also to really find the cause of allergy. Right. And that could be seasonal because sometimes this flower blooms, that thing comes in the air, air pollution right. or dryness in the weather. And possibly even diet as well. Could that be a contributing factor to yeah, allergy? Yeah, food allergy is also one of the allergies right. that are really common. Okay. Some people prepare their own uh, dog food or cat food and they use fresh food and so on which I guess is probably a better thing um, but obviously the pet food companies do have doctors that they consult and so on when they're making uh, mixes for, for dog food either dry or wet what's your opinion of those things what do you think is, is the best thing to feed animals I and mean, let's bear in mind that this is your opinion yeah. and not, not all of the veterinary uh, uh, industry in, Hong, in well, uh, Thailand well sodium is, is also necessary for, for the body so um, there will be th there should be some sodium in, in the food too but other things other than that is other nutrition so I think um, any any commercial but analyzed food would be best for, for the animals. Right. But I'm not saying that your cooked food is not good, but if you know how much of what to put in there to, to make the complete nutrition for them. But how, how important would you say is some element of raw food in, a, in an animal's diet? Again, I think if they get their product analyzed, um, that have the complete meal. I think there's no problem with that mm. Because it's like people too. Some people are doing better off with meat or no meat Right, so it is it is basically like people and I and I have some friends that are vegetarians and mm. they have their dogs are also vegetarians uh, How healthy I mean no disrespect obviously to my friends But how healthy can that be for a dog to be on a purely vegetable diet? Um, in many cases, I think vegetables also have protein, sure. plant-based protein, right? Um, if they get everything as their body needed, then I think there's no problem. Okay, so it's not really necessary yeah. then to give meat to your, to your animals? If the um, vegan menu that they get is, ha has enough of the nutrition, yeah. right? Because if the body is lacking something, they will of course show you. Some people will only feed their, their dogs or cats just you know, dry biscuits and so on rather than uh, meat or, or vegetables and so on. How, how healthy could that be? I feel like good quality ones are giving um, enough nutrition to the pets and also the dry food will, will drive the thirst. Right. So they, they drink enough water too. Our guest today has been Dr. Peace from the 102 Pet Clinic in Soy 102. Um, doctor, you were talking to me just a moment ago about prevention being very important. What, what do you mean by prevention rather than cure? I mean vaccines, basic needs like parasite 
prevention. So we're talking about perhaps fleas and ticks and so on. Yes, correct. I think we don't want them to get before we do the treatment, but right. we, we want to prevent them so they don't get it at all. Okay. But another thing, obviously, is to, you know, when you're stroking your dog, have a little bit of an extra feel under the tummy and various yeah, areas sure. where, where you might find some weird and wonderful stuff. Right. And, and that's also close bonding between pet owners <laughs> and their pets, right? Grooming. <laughs> yes, grooming each other. <laughs> and yeah. picking the parasites off. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. That way, um, you can notice something that... They might not tell you that, that it's been bothering them. Right. But if you notice it before, then um, early catch is better than, than sure. later. So you're saying prevention rather than cure yeah, if you right. see these things. So another, obviously, telltale sign would be uh, lots of itching and scratching, yes? Yeah, for ticks and fleas, of course. Yeah. Mm. What other parasites are there, though, I mean, uh, that, that are uh, more common here? Internal worms. Okay. Yeah, intestinal worms. So we, we worms. kind of mentioned before about heartworm, but there's intestinal worms and... Right. And intestinal worms would be something that people can get too, straight from their pets. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so be aware of that. Hope you're enjoying your breakfast, dear listener. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, look, Dr. Peace, it's been lovely to have you back again. Uh, so thank you very much indeed for, for coming down to see us, especially on your day off and Valentine's Day as also. well. Um, if our listener would like to get hold of you, how can they do that? Um, we're on Facebook and also on Google. Just search 102 Pet Clinic. Very good. Dr. Peace, thank you very much indeed. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. What's left of it? Thank you. Thank you.